Okay, so we just say goodbye to uh, David Bedeen. Uh, wow, what a great guy, man. Just just a phenomenal source of information and, and uh, just completely willing to help us accomplish our goals here. So um, the reason that uh, we had to leave David is because he's, he's uh, uh, Jewish, of course, and no Jews today are allowed uh, inside Bethlehem. So uh, he cannot go in there with us by law. So uh, Vernon and I say, hi, Vernon. How's it going? <laughs> we're still together. Yeah, yep. Vernon's and Ryan's are allowed, so we're going in. But uh, so what David did is he arranged for us a Palestinian driver. This is Hanny. Say hi, Hanny. Hanny or Hanny? Hanny. Hanny. I know. Okay. Yeah. I'm always saying ah, but I know there's no ah. So Hanny. And uh, Hanny um, is going to take us into Bethlehem. And uh, David has given Vernon and, and me um, several assignments. So uh, uh, just some favors that he asked us to accomplish while we're in Bethlehem. Some things that he can he can't research himself because again he's not allowed here. So uh, we're going in and uh, gonna visit the uh, standard tourist site here, the Church of the Nativity, and then uh, also we're going to visit uh, what's called the Palestinian Peace Center, quote unquote, and a refugee camp, our first Palestinian refugee camp. And uh, so here we go, and it should be interesting. Yeah, uh, peace for the peoples. If this is for the people, the people is good. Jewish and the Arab. The people is uh, friends. But the government, it's Abu Mazen, Netanyahu is the problem, not the, the people. And, and honey, again, you're, you're a Palestinian Muslim and you and David are, are good friends. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. You just want peace and you're saying that, that the fight is between the governments, not the people. Yeah. The people want peace. The people just want the peace, but the government is the problem. For the Jews and the Palestinian, this is the problem. Just not the people. The people. So I go for David for home. I drink, and David is coming for me. I invite him to drink for me coffee. It's no problem for the people. Yeah, the problem is just for the government. You you want you want what we want, which is you know home and family and make a living and have friends and yeah, yeah, just, yeah. just live I, our lives, right? Yeah, I'm from here for family and uh, mother, father, children, uh, brothers, sisters. I, I want the peace. I like the peace. Of course. Yeah. But the government, she's, uh, I don't know what's the problem for him. She's uh, uh, Abu Mazen and Netanyahu. It's, it's the problems, not the people's. Abu Mazen is uh, yeah. uh, Mahmoud Abbas, the president of the Palestinian Authority. Right. Yeah. And uh, if not, if the government is like the peace, she's coming the peace for the Palestinian Israel. But I don't know. She's one here. This is she's one. This is she's not put this is for the tables. If he's coming only the Bible is for the tables, and to speak, it's good. Yeah. The people's uh, me. I have children. I don't have the problems. I want to peace and I want to happy for my family and the Jewish is want happy for the family for him yeah. not tourist not uh, the problems she see for the TV right for the TV you oh, see yeah. too much UN, UN vehicle over there yeah. yeah 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 that's why we're here honey is we're just trying to uh, learn and understand and kind of get a viewpoint on both sides so cool. oh. <laughs> he got mad at me filming. Why? What? Why didn't Why didn't you want me to film him? Family? No. He it seemed like he got mad because I was filming him. Was he mad? This? Yeah. No, no, no. This is a uh, little. Uh, crazy. Oh, kind of crazy. Okay, all right. Yeah, yeah you crazy. never know. We we have those in Arizona too. Not so. uh, the people's. Fault. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Okay, so we're coming up on the the Haitia refugee camp. So this yeah. is our first Palestinian refugee camp. I've never never seen one. So is this is this the Haitia here? It's the Haitia here. We're in it now. This is a refugee this, camp. This okay. side. Okay. It's the Haitian. It's not the Haitians. This is the, the Haitian for the... This is the, the Haitian. Okay, there's a gas station and, and I didn't catch it on film but we just passed yeah. by Hyundai. Gas station dealership and I just saw a Coca-Cola sign and and we're actually in a refugee camp. Okay. So it's not all tents and people starving and suffering. I'm not making light of, uh, I mean I see this property here but there's a 
you know, merchants here, there's commerce going on. I mean, I see that, you know, people aren't looking real wealthy here, but, oh, you know, that's good. Oops. Hello, Abiyah. Hello. كيف حالك؟ سلامات سكان الدهشة وين في محل أنا اللي بقدر أشرح للجماعة عن الدهشة وعن المخيم هذول أمريكا مركز إبداع وين مركز إبداع؟ وين البوابة بتعرف؟ البوابة وكالة الغوث اه عند الوكالة البناية الكبيرة في هناك I take it to now So the guy we're just talking to is from the Haitia so you were just asking him okay He's asking me he's happy to the people here he asked me Oh, there's a there's a sign with Yasser Arafat on it. Sign with Yasser Arafat. I don't know who that good-looking guy is. This is the Haitia. This is the Haitia. There's Arafat. Okay. Should we should we get out and uh, walk a little bit, or because I'm supposed to take a couple of photographs? Is it safe to get out and walk? Yeah. Can you walk? No. You're walking. No walking. No, no. You're walking. Oh, okay. No, there's the. So this is. Yeah. UNRWA, right? UN Washington Works Agency, yeah. UN vehicle. Yeah, those are the guys running the show here. Head down. Center, okay. Cultural center, okay. Can you? We need to do it? No, we don't need to do it. Yeah, we just, uh, we're, we're uh, I'm, a, I'm a pastor in America and, um... It's all, it's all off. You, but you speak English good, right? Oh, okay. Yeah, you speak English good, right? So, yeah, so I'm, I'm a, a Christian pastor, and uh, Vernon helps me, but um, I've been trying to uh, study and teach um, my, uh, you know, congregation and, and some other people on the uh, Israeli-Palestinian uh, issue and just trying to get a better understanding for, you know, um, the struggle for peace and things like that. And um, I've actually, you know, gotten a lot from the uh, Israeli perspective, but what we're trying to do now is get more of the Palestinian perspective so, um, you know, so we want to visit the camp and kind of see how things are going. And I know that the peace process is breaking down. But, and, uh, so that's, that's basically what we're doing here. So, but, uh, yeah. So, you are welcome in the Asia refugee camp. Yeah, I appreciate that. Thank you. What, what's your name? Isa. Isa? Yeah, Ryan. Isa. Yeah, Ryan. And this is Vernon here. So, yeah, appreciate you uh, accepting this here. So, how, how big is the Haitian? How many people live here? How much time do you have? Uh, well, not a whole lot of time. Yeah, you have time. Yeah, but you know what? For first thing, guys, I need a, a bathroom if you got one. Yeah, one. bathroom. Uh, Ping pong? Table tennis? Ten yeah. Yeah, ping pong, yeah. How are you guys doing that? Uh, I told you, here we believe medium is message. <laughs> okay. So we play basketball to tell people that we can play this, you know, strange game. But yeah. After that, we are good. It is a strange people. game. It is a very strange game. Yeah, I these trophies, well. So, what are you guys best in, football or basketball? Basketball and basketball is more famous than football. Oh, it is. That's interesting. Yeah, it's like most Okay. Uh, so, yeah, to go back to... Subject. Yeah, yeah, please. Yeah, we'll take that subject. Well, you, are, you are interesting to know about the camp. Yeah, you, you know, know I, I, would like to ask it, you would like for me just to talk? Or you know, I, I, was, I was just going to say that honestly, I, I don't even know enough about the situation to know what to ask. So, yeah, just tell us, you know, what you think. And, and again, I'm a Christian pastor. Um, I've been studying for, you know, several years on the Israeli Palestinian conflict. And um, I think what my audience is, is uh, really interested in understanding is, you know, how, you know, how can we achieve peace? Because there even be peace uh, between the, the Israelis and the Palestinians. What, what do the Palestinians really want? And uh, what, what's the Palestinian perspective? I think what you, what me and you were just talking about, you said you play basketball to get out your message. So what would you say, I mean, to the people who are going to be watching this, what's your message? What, what is it that you want to get out that you're also trying to get out via basketball and football and table tennis? And yeah, the most important thing is, you know, media, they talk about us as a, well, they try to show the political side of the Palestinian. But we have amazing life. We are people we can love, we can play basketball, we have a writer, we have artists, but no one focuses on all this. You know, media just show us as the tourism people, which in reality, no. We live hard life, yes, because you are now in the Haitian refugee camp. 
13, uh, for 13, 14,000 persons, they live in half kilometers, so it's too crowded. 60 percent from 14,000, they are under 18 years old. And we doesn't have places for them, even we doesn't have basketball. We play in the street, but even, even of that, we believe that by basketball we can tell the people and we can collect the people together. So we play this game. We use our, our walls here in the camp to paint about it. Because we doesn't have like special place to paint or you know, improve this tunnel. We use our stuff to tell people look to our reality. So, okay, we live in camps, but we are not weak people. We are not like tourism people. No, we are strong. Mm. Strong because I'm still talking to you. I'm still searching for a solution for Palestine. Uh, by basketball, we are, we are fighting and we are collecting the people. And I tell you, our player they didn't take any money. They play just volunteer. Because they feel together, they are making like you know, something. They are collecting the people. We have culture, cultural department here, kids under 18 years old, they are publishing books talking about, you know, personal and, you know, finding solution. Those people, they are not weak. They are too strong. But media, unfortunately, they always focus on, you know, this contradiction. This is why we're here. Yeah, we, we want to get it straight from you guys, you know, try to clear up that, that perception. And it's a strong perception, I have to admit, in the West. And not everybody, I mean, I mean, there is about. It may be like 50 50 split. Yeah, but unfortunately, my friend, that most of the research, Palestinian and you know, international, when it comes to Palestinian Israeli conflict, they always talk about the, the result, the negative. People kill, people die, which is yes, people you know, suffer, we are suffering. Now I'm trying to focus about how refugees, despite of all their suffering, you know, they organize the social life here. How those people, which is, which is sorry, research shows about this research to talk about the stu Israeli student in Jerusalem and the Palestinian student here in the Haitian camp. It shows that the student in the Haitian they finish more education than the Israeli is in Jerusalem. Really? Wow. In Jerusalem. It shows that those people they are still, you know, they can dream, they still dream, and they still, you know, uh, living, fighting for their life. How, how long do you live here in this camp? I born here in the camp. So you lived here your whole life. How old are you now? I'm 26. So what? So um, from the perspective of someone who's lived in a camp like this for your whole life, uh, how do you feel about Israel? How do you feel about the Jewish people? And, and you know, be as honest as you want to be. I know it's a touchy no, okay. subject. You know, okay, so. yeah. It's important, yeah, to to distinguish between religion and political idea. Mm -hmm. Religion, you know, Jew is like a religion idea. Like Muslim, like Christian, like people who's not believing. I'm not Muslim, not Christian, you know. Oh, you're, oh, you're, oh, you're not. I'm okay. living you're in one place and we are so friends together, you know, we are living in one family. So you're not even Muslim? I don't want to fight for anyone. Because when it's come to state or when it's come to political thing, everything is damaged. Leave the political away. Let's leave the political. Deal with political as a political. What we, are facing, what we are facing is not Jew people. No, we are facing Israel. Zionist movement, because that if we look to Brooklyn in, in New York and U.S., there is no Israeli flag that being raised there. Because the Jew in Brooklyn, they know that this is a political movement, and they are using the religion for their personal benefit. Mm -hmm. So what we are facing is more deep than religion or something. Religion, you know, we can leave people, you know, believe what they want. Yeah. But this is a political issue, so when we discuss about it, we need to discuss about it as a policy. So for sure, nowadays, we talk about two-state solution, or you hear about this two-state solution. What do you think? That's like really joke. It's really <laughs> silly, man. Yeah. Because I will explain to you what I mean of this two-state solution. West Bank, in West Bank, there are now, the size of West Bank is 22% from the whole of Palestine. Like the way wow. our land Palestine, 22%. Mm -hmm. From 22%, nowadays there are 4,000, four, Israeli settlements have been in building with Bank. Yeah. So yeah. from 22 persons we became 9 persons. In West Bank there are 6 Israeli chicken. 300 inside uh, the Berlin West Bank. The Israeli Israel. uh, checkpoint. And 300 yeah, checkpoint and 300 around. Mm -hmm. So from 9 persons it became 5 because also there is additional like special road between the settlement for the just Israeli uh, road. We can use it as Palestinian. Yeah. So from 5 persons it became less. When the wall has been built in 2002, it doesn't build around West Bank, it has been built inside West Bank, so we lost more land. So from four it became three. When Kerry came to discuss about two-state solution, he doesn't speak about one two, or doesn't speak about one-state solution, which is maybe more logic. He's talk about three or four percent for those people. 
So on the world, when we discuss about it, you know, there is no settlers anymore. We became the settlers as a Palestinian. And just so, as a result of the international law, as a result also of our authority and the Israeli authority. What, what, do you, what, do you, what do you think is the solution? What would you like to see as a solution? I mean, I know that a lot of Palestinians are, you know, like, like you kind of just alluded to, two-state solution is, is wrong. And I know a lot of Palestinians, you know, think that, you know, if you guys want the whole uh, territory back, all of Palestine, I mean, you where are you are? Arizona. 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 Yeah. How much time did it take you from there to here? Uh, oh gosh, we traveled for a good 22, 23 hours and didn't sleep at all. I'm still recovering, yeah. <laughs> You know when I traveled last time to France, how much it took me? Uh, because we didn't have airport in Palestine, and we cannot use the Israeli airport. Oh. From here to Jordan, it took me two days, uh. and from Jordan to France, it took me two hours. Uh. So wow. jo Paris or France is more close to me than Jerusalem, that um, until now I didn't visit. Yeah. It's what I want. I want to, like, the freedom of movement, to move what I want, like you. Could, could there to be... choose what I want. Could there be a, a state of Israel and a state of Palestine and living side by side and, and, and have that? Like everybody get along and the Israelis let the Palestinians come my friend, in? My friend, it would be so silly if we didn't study the history in a good way. It's happening in German, East and West and it doesn't work, then the people live together. It's happening in Bosnia and Herzegovina and people you know, then together. It's happening in Barcelona, which now it is still going on. But we will able to solve it. Two state solution doesn't work. Yeah. And it's one. I, I don't see that. But this is, this is just political, this is just political, personal, political benefit. Yeah. So what what is, what is the Zionist movement? I mean, I know what it is, but yeah. Tell me, tell me your uh, perspective on the Zionist movement. Zionist movement. Okay, but you will notice that also we talk as a new generation by we. Because this is the message that we carry from generation to generation. I didn't want to talk about like, what my grandfather, you know, or my dad told me about the Zionists. But I would tell you, you know, from what I saw in the camp here. Because as a person, the Israelis saw our media enter two times each week until nowadays to this camp. Sometimes they enter for basic reason, to arrest people, to damage houses. They bomb eight houses here in this camp. Wow. And sometimes they enter for nothing. So there's, so there's violence happening here in this camp? In this camp, yeah. Yeah. So sometimes the Israeli enter for the training. You know, training, I will tell you. Ah. Yesterday, at 2 a.m., the Israeli enter here and he was bombing, like throwing some bomb and gas. And they enter for what? They give two, pa two paper for two persons, two family here in the camp. The paper, it says that the man or the guy that his name is written in the paper, that he need to go to the investigation, to make the Israeli investigation. And guess what? The two men already they are in the Israeli jail. Mm. So it's just, it's just a, an excuse to come in. So they tell them no. When those two guys they come back from the jail, they have been arrested. Tell them to go back to the investigation. There's a reason to just make a training. Yeah. Where is this human center? You think this war that we we read about it in books or you know maybe you got it in your country, but here in the real it does not exist. Yeah. And then so unfortunately, you, yes. unfortunately, what I'm trying to tell you that I try to imagine that I came to your home, and I put you in the bathroom. If you go out from the bathroom, you need to smile and laugh for me. I will allow you. If not, I will keep you there. And then you feel, you feel up, you feel tired. You go to ask your neighborhood. No one from me, your neighborhood, they told you anything. Mm -hmm. Then you react. When you react, your neighborhood, they came to stop what you are doing. Mm -hmm. You are bad, but you are bad. But when you tell them, okay, try to help me. But I decide you want to go and move. You know, they said, yeah, this is your home, your responsibility. Mm -hmm. This is what's happening for us. Yeah. So we cannot move, we cannot anything. The law, let's talk about internet, talk about as a tourism, because the person who has money, he has power, the person who has power, he created the law. Yeah. And we are weak. But we didn't, I, I, again, I would tell you that, unfortunately, we didn't read the history in a good way. Because Palestine, or we, we are one of the few countries that we never occupy another country. Mm -hmm. We never had army. And we never had a state before. Mm -hmm. So how we would be like tourism people? Right. We're just fighting, you know, I'm fighting just for my little brother to not let him face the bad thing that I face it. Yeah. Because I'm trying to find like nice life for him and tourism. By talking to you now, I will have like a list, one point in my list, in the Israeli list. And it's happening just, before. Just from, just from talking to us, you think? Because I'm, well, I usually out. make a tour a lot with people. Yeah, I was going to ask you, um, 
how many how many Americans do you have come in here and talk to you like we're talking to you? Then? Yeah, there is a lot of people. A lot, really. Okay. A lot of European, American, American too. Okay. Yeah. So we're not, you're not, we're not your first Americans. Okay, that's that's good. No, there <laughs> there is a lot. There's the people that came here for three, four months. They live here. Oh, live live here in the camp. Yeah, they live. So on the way in, um, we noticed uh, several uh, United Nations vehicles that you went. Is that UNRWA? Yes. And what, what's and and I know that they they're connected somehow to the camps. What, what are they doing? I don't know what they do. There. A lot of being created in 1950 for humanitarian service, which is a little bit strange than the whole of the world. Mm -hmm. If you look to the whole of the world, there is something they call it the HCR, which it is also part from the United Nations, responsible for solving the political issue. Since what's happening in Palestine, they create the honor, which is a new department, the new way. UNRWA is UNRWA. So UNRWA was having the refugees here in the camp. The service is, uh, it was the tent. The refugees, they live under the tent that was founded by UNRWA from 1950 to 1956. Wow, then just tent, like tents. Tents. Living in tents, yeah. In 1956, it was one of the biggest snow. People, they die because they were living under the tent. So in UNRWA, they start building shelter. Every family, they have one shelter room, three by three meters, mm -hmm. sometimes three by four. And between 15 to 20 shelter rooms, they build one external bathroom yeah. until 1970 or 72 exactly. Yeah. Nowadays, the service, we have one doctor for 14,000, 13, 14,000 persons. Yes, yeah, there's a private okay. doctor in the city, but according to the economical level of the refugees, sometimes it's hard. Okay, coming in, we passed a uh, Hyundai dealership, a car dealership. Was that, is that considered part of the... Oh, yeah. Uh, do you remember we passed a car dealership just just a couple miles up the road? Yeah, was it the other town? It was the town. Oh, it's a town. Okay, so that, that's not. So I mean, I mean, like the end of the So so we're not seeing like a, like international companies setting up shop in the in the camp itself. International combat like ah uh, yeah you mean like this kind of car? Right? Yeah, I mean, what, I guess what I'm asking you is. Um, being here in the camp, I'm actually surprised. This is the first time that I've ever uh, been in, in you know, one of the camps. And uh, I was expecting to see more poverty and, 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 and I'm not saying like anyone out there looks rich or, or well off. It, look, it looks bad, but not as bad as I, I was expecting. So, so what, what, I mean, what's the economy here? I mean, I mean are things getting better? Do you feel like, like things are getting better for people here? The living situation? Look, uh, we have high employment. High employment because we have person of the people who living who lived here in the camp. They used to go to, to work in building inside, you know, the Palestinian area inside Israel or in the Israel. Nowadays, after the war, you know, we have high person. So most of those people they start making like small businesses, which is opening shop, like damaging one room from their home and make like sh market or shop. Mm -hmm. This shop by this way they bring like some income for their family. But yeah, in general also, you know, especially among the new generation, yeah. we have high employment. What, so what, do you, what do you count as high employment? What? You like saying this good, right? <laughs> <laughs> you, like, you like it, yeah. What, like, uh, what percentage? I can't, I, can't, I, like, okay. I, I didn't know it, but uh, why I tell you like high person? Because we have also, like among the new generation, who finish high education, finishing I don't know business or social worker, and nowadays mm -hmm. they are in the homes because there is no job. Even you know, they fight for studying this kind of thing, but you know, it doesn't have. We try to offer like in the social association you know, we have it here in the camp. Sometimes we get like a job out you know other city or outside, but you know, it's really expensive. Like you will not, you're like you live you know, take the money and spend it in the same month. I mean. You cannot build a future based on like, because it gets like little bit of money. And this is unfortunately based on Paris Agreement, which is Israeli-Palestinian agreement, that the Palestinian uh, life it should be depend on the Israeli economy. So the minimum salary here in Palestine, 1,200 shekel, and the minimum salary inside Israel is 4,500 shekel, three dollars. And the same economic, the same price, the same product, the same, the same, the same. Mm. How will survive? Mm. And it's really oh, complicated. Yeah. Yeah. So you live your day. But like you said, you know, when we first came in, that, that you guys are, are strong and you're proving that. Yeah. Just, yeah. Just, yeah. Just, just the basketball, you know, so point. That's, that's a good point. Yeah, we have teachers, yeah. The teachers is didn't have 100, 500, 1,500 shekels. Yeah. Teachers. Yeah, they're, they're pretty underpaid where we live too, but not that people bad. people here, the, the Palestinians, too much uh, 
1,500 if you have uh, five children. What are you doing? Yeah. It's rough, yeah. yeah. So, so do, are there... I take it, me, I take it 4,000 shekels in Israel. Me, I, what is 4,000 shekels? 5,000 shekels. Yeah. This is, uh, much, yeah. Yeah, if I pay for water, for light, for this is... Yeah. Okay. Me, I have two, two boys. She's uh, one doctor in Germany, one the, uh, in uh, Russia. One I pay for him eight uh, hundred dollars, and uh, two I pay eight hundred euro. Mm -hmm. Too much expensive. Right. So, what do you guys do for educate? You said higher education. So, is there a university here, a college in in Palestine, and? Um, are you guys then allowed to go into uh, Jerusalem and get jobs there? Or are you guys allowed to go to universities in Jerusalem? No, we have university in Bethlehem and Ramallah. Like inside Jerusalem, like, you know, just cancel because, you know, it's, it's impossible to go there. Okay. But I'm talking about the West Bank, inside West Bank. Mm -hmm. Yes, um, we have universities. So we used to go there. Like in Bethlehem, here we have three universities. An additional. The, the life itself is like, you know, teach you more than the books. Uh, yeah. So you'll see like children, like what I told you before, they publish books and novels. We basically talk about the, their issue. We have something interesting, which we call it the collective dictionary. Say that again? The collective dictionary. Okay. Which it is here we redefine, because it's silly that three of us, we define democracy in like the same way. Even our condition is different. So what we did here in the camp, we redefine these terms and meaning based on what we live. The week for you, it consists of seven days. The week in one of our villages close to here, it consists of eight days. Because there's eight big family, all of them they are farmer, and there is one spring of water. To avoid any problem, they divide every family, they use the water for one day. So it's simple, they change the week to eight days. The idea of ownership was not existing. Our life, it was more like a common. I told you about the walls of the camp. When I used to make some graffiti in the walls of the camp, I didn't ask anyone. I just come and because we have already some idea that this wall is for everyone. So we really found the meaning of ownership based on what, what we live. It's kind of something we call a collective dictionary. So, so you work, for example, the terms of work. When you work, you have like kind of loyal authority. Uh, you work for eight hours just to bring the money. But after I finished my work, I came to Ibda, and I'm in this association, I'm volunteering in this association since 12 years. And I didn't take any money. You know, this and actually kind of work, we define it, which is something you like. That's what we call it collective dictionary. Okay. You, you, you actually reminded me, I, I just realized that, uh, that, that I forgot to ask you to introduce yourself. Um, what, what's your name again? Isa. Isa, and, and what's your position here? Volunteer. Volunteer. And, and um, what, I kind of feel silly, but what is this organization? Where are we right now? It's social associations have been created in uh, 1994. The name of it is Abdaka for developing uh, a way of Colorado, developing the kids' talent and exchange, cultural exchange. Oh, like culture, okay. Yeah, and you say cultural, cultural, cultural exchange. exchange, exchange with who? Uh, we had a strong relationship uh, with other associations in France, in Europe in general, and uh, in America. In America too. Uh, our dancing group, they, well, they went to America two times, making sure they are talking about our issue. Yeah. Now our dancing group, they are, they are traveling in the Arab country, mm -hmm. talking about you know, our, our core life uh, here in the camp. It's the same as for the basketball. I told you here we take the champions since 2005. Mm -hmm. And by basketball, we talk about, you know, we get a chance to play outside. And we talk about our issue by basketball. Even they are full volunteers, they are taking money. Yeah, yeah. We have volleyball for the girls, is the same. We have women department here. You know, 120 women, they work in this department, you know, working with women. Uh, we have, you know, this building, we have another building, kindergarten, embroidery project, media center, mm -hmm. cultural department. Uh, we have different departments. We create each department, not from 
like a weekend one. Mm -hmm. I mean, uh, we didn't search for what, the, what we face it here in the world now we fix it. Yeah. Now we try to search for what is the people, what is the strengthening point in the camp, and we try to enhance it. Yeah. By this way, you know, you give the people like a, a new way to continue. Yeah, I got hope and, and, and a vision for the future. Um, so, what you were saying before about political dictionary, um, when we were collective, collective. Your collective yeah, collective. dictionary is what you call it. Okay. So, um, c coming in, I noticed a lot of uh, murals on the on the uh, buildings coming in. Like, I, the only one I recognized is uh, Arafat, and I don't know who the other people are. Um, you mean in this wall? Outside. Yeah, just, just coming in, I just saw a lot of um, like yes. depictions of people. I don't know who the people are. Yeah, the first one, which is the Hassan Kafani, famous Palestinian writer. Uh, he had been assassinated because of his books. Mm. The second photo, uh, Najil Ali. Uh, he's a graffiti. He's an artist. Uh, he had been assassinated in London in 1980 because he's a graffiti. Mm -hmm. Because he's graffiti, what more political and social graffiti. And during the first and before, everybody was like reacting, everybody was like making demonstration based on his graffiti. Mm -hmm. He was assassinated in London in 1980. The third one, uh, Mohd Darwish, he's a poet, and the world is still empty because we are thinking to continue to like rent a uh, uh, woman uh, artist. Mm -hmm. uh, but the idea was to tell people that, okay, you hear about Palestine, just you know one side of Palestine. We have artists, we have writers, we have musicians, we have, we have a life. Yeah. Uh, and we deserve to, to, like, to, to, to fight for it. So this media, I don't know why. They just you know, show us as a bad people. As well, you know, it, it's, it makes for good, good drama, good, good for television. Sure. Yeah. So the, I told you, this is all this kind of agenda that it's like, you know, held the idea of like Zionist. It's the same as when I told you the difference between Jew and the Zionist. It's the same as the media and how it's going to work. Yeah, because, because you, you're okay with Jewish people, it's just, it's just the government of Israel. Sorry, I didn't get that. Oh, you are, so you're okay with Jew, the Jewish people, in other words, it's just, I mean, you said that before, but it's, it's the Israeli government that, that is the problem. Not, I not mean, Jews. the Israeli, they use, they use, they use this religion thing, you know, for them. I mean, okay, I'm, no one will be happy about what's happening in the Holocaust. Can all you, the people, they will be sad, all of us will be sad about it. But in the same time, I'm not responsible to pay the tax of what the Germans did, which I'm paying it until now. A new Holocaust that's happening in Palestinian for the Palestinian, and no one like focus on it. Could you could you picture Palestinians and Jews living in the same neighborhood, working together, going to school together, some, someday? It's a good question to ask it for my grandfather because he was living and working with Jew people. I told you, religion is something else. Like let's put it away. You know? Yeah. When yeah. we talk about Palestinians, we talk about political conflict, which it is. We need to when we discuss it, discuss about politics. Mm -hmm. But unfortunately the Israel really use yeah. the religion whole, you know, track all this Jewish people and you know, show them, you know, their sadness thing and you know just to attract them for this political thing. Yeah, yeah. Which is bad. Because that I told you, if you look to Brooklyn, where well, you know there is a high person of Jew there, no there is no Israeli flag. Because they know that those people they know that people it was linked together since the history of Palestine, there's difference between we, we don't have a lot of time here, but um, anything that you would recommend, I mean, we just got here, this is our first stop here in the camp. Anything you recommend that uh, Ernie and I see in the camp while we're here? I'm, I'm not sure what to... Yeah, I would like just to tell you. Walk in the camp, consider yourself as a refugee, and try to read the history of the walls by yourself. And you are welcome in our camp. Thank you, thank you so thank much. You. Yeah. Really appreciate your time, man. Yeah. Hey, God bless you. God yeah. bless you.